Since the inception of Mayo Clinic, the concept that the needs of the patient come first has always been part of our credo. The ability to use the human genome to make that even more of a reality is what brought our Centre for Individualised Medicine into existence and what drives it today. Our Diagnostic Odyssey service line is really about solving cases that have not been solvable by standard molecular biology methods. We see patients that have usually been in and out of different genetics clinics over the last several years to a decade. And using standard methodologies, um, they've just not been able to come up with the molecular etiology of the disease for that patient. When Javru was first born, he just always seemed like he was in a fog. He didn't really meet his milestones. There was a lot of little things that were just totally different from what we had experienced with our first child. I'd say we saw at least 10 specialists before going to Mayo. We had a lot of bad experiences with different hospitals. It was very traumatic for us going through the last five years. You don't know a diagnosis. You don't know how long is he going to live. Is something going to happen, you know, before he's seven or eight or nine. We adopted Dustin. We got him at three months old. When he was about 18 months old, I took him out of the high chair and stood him on the floor, and he kept going sideways and couldn't keep his balance. It was sort of unusual. Things started getting worse as he started getting older. He started having more and more of the jerking like he does. And I've worked 23 years trying to do whatever we have to do to hopefully make Dustin's life as happy as he can be. Patients and parents that come through the service line have been on this journey for a long time. And so I think one of the most common questions is, is this the test that's gonna give us the answer that we've been seeking for so long? Um, that's a hard question to answer because sometimes we do find it, um, other times we don't. The testing that we're doing now is a much broader net. So instead of looking very focused and very logical at one gene associated with one phenotype, we can take a look at a broader set of phenotypes across all genes within the human genome and see if we can't really understand what's driving that patient to be sick. Probably one of the most unique parts of our service is what happens once the results come back and it's pretty exciting to be part of as a healthcare provider because the results don't just come back to me or the physician, they come back to an entire team. The Genetic Audit Board is one of the greatest value of our clinical services. Uh, it focuses on the patient, uh, but it defines a multidisciplinary uh, group of individuals that they have uh, diversified expertise. This includes our genetic counselors, our medical geneticists, lab technicians who run sequencing, our bioinformatics team, and ultimately everybody in the same room together doing a diagnostic odyssey board which looks over the results very carefully and translates it back with the clinician present so that that information can be relayed back to the patient by their provider. What we found is that if we can augment the information coming back on the clinical report with additional research findings, uh, deeper dives into the literature, these sort of things, it, it fosters a great communication and conversation about that patient. And so what we found is ultimately the clinical report is really just a beginning and, and not necessarily an ending to the patient's diagnostic odyssey. We have several cases where exome sequencing did not necessarily reveal the answer. It gave us the hints, and then we went beyond those hints or these points to do additional work leading to a solution or to an answer. We're now rolling out functional validation for variants of unknown significance. Effectively, what this means is we take variants that we think might be causal, but we don't have enough information to prove it, and we're able to take them into the lab and actually test those so we can test those in model systems, cell lines, or even uh, human iPS cells. Uh, and using that data, provide additional certainty that the uh, variant is actually causal in the condition. That's something unique we can provide in our Diagnostic Odyssey uh, a service that we offer. When we are able to take a patient with a rare disease to make a discovery, even if it doesn't result in a new treatment, but just to provide them with answers, I think is so satisfying for our team. 
you feel that you accomplished what you wanted to accomplish and then you are providing care to the patient that what was, what was expected from you. Knowing that we have a diagnosis kind of has eased those fears and, and uh, we kind of know where we can go from here. This has been a miracle to us. We've never had a diagnosis before and we were just really excited whenever it was finally found. Dustin suffers from a condition called episodic ataxia. This is a very rare condition. Without whole exome sequencing, we would not be able to derive so easily to the diagnosis. I have seen many benefits from the medication that Dustin is taking at the present time. Now he is able to function, he's able to play basketball, he's able to go to school, different men.